Good morning. The yo-yo market continues. I'm Pete Najeri, and this is The Take for Market Rebellion. And yesterday, just a continuation of everything we've been seeing. We've been talking about how choppy it is and some of the volatility and why, even though we aren't getting the kind of moves that, that would require us to have that volatility up near that 32 level and, and just below, actually closer to 28. But why is it up that high? Even a lot of people would say, well, a lot of that has to do with what we are seeing throughout the day, the intraday, the movements, the ups and the downs. And yesterday, another great example of that. As a matter of fact, in the final hour and 15 minutes of the day, that was all of the gains of the day. About 177 points move to the upside into the positive, And that's where we finished the day. Very, very strong. And take a look over at the, the, the NASDAQ itself. 10,500. We continue to push near those, those numbers. Today, we're actually getting well over those numbers. But we are seeing a little bit of a shift in the market on some news. We'll recap a little bit more about yesterday. So we had volatility around 28 yesterday. Oil was holding around 41. You had gold back not only at 1800, but call it 18, almost 1820, silver 19. Copper, we talked about yesterday as well. And copper, that big move that that has made from the lows to where it is now, trading closer to the 280, 282 range, somewhere in there. So certainly we are seeing a lot going on in the commodity space we haven't talked much about the 10 year because we just haven't seen as much movement in in that area for a very long period of time so what was working yesterday why did the markets when we see that move to the upside what was really sort of some of the areas that were pushing it well travel and leisure we talk about hotels all the time we've had the ups and the downs yesterday was an update you look at marriott up about three percent you look at the the cruise lines both up about five percent when i look over at norwegian and carnival those names certainly have been pressing back and forth and, and the, the movement there and the volatility there is unbelievable and we talk about volumes all the time they've certainly had volumes people talk about the retail customers getting involved and more and more. And certainly there are areas that a lot of folks have been focusing on. And I would say the cruise ships is definitely one of those areas. So that's certainly something that yesterday that did stand out. Uh, and we've watched that time and time again. There are days where there's they're getting punished. There are days where they're getting rewarded. So that's just that continuous volatility that we are seeing in that particular segment, obviously all COVID related. So I look over at the semiconductors, though, and every single day it seems like we watch the semiconductors. Somebody takes leadership, and that that particular ETF just continues to move to the upside. I'm talking about the SMH, near all-time highs once again. Unbelievable movement to the upside, up about 1.5% again yesterday. NVIDIA, you had Taiwan Semi, you had ASML. We have a little bit of that, that leadership change here and there. NVIDIA seems to be a part of it very, very frequently, however. Also, within that NASDAQ, and we talk about this all the time, the biotech. As a matter of fact, yesterday, I look, take a look over there. You, we, we talked about Biogen yesterday. It was up about 5% yesterday. A really nice move, near five-year highs in terms of the biotech index itself. And what was really some of the driving force yesterday, and we've talked about this more and more over the last couple of weeks, I would say, it's the China names. And, and, and I've brought this up time and time again, and we've talked about that for some unusual option activity. We had Tencent Music not too terribly long ago. We've had other names yesterday. We had another one of those China names, but Baba yesterday up about 9%, JD up 6%, Momo up 4%. I talked about Tencent Music, that was up 2.5%. And that was on a continuation move that we have seen out of that specific name, TME, which has been just a strong beast since we started seeing some of that unusual option activity start to hit in there. It's just been chopping wood and moving higher and moving higher and moving higher. Been trimming into that one, I think, matter of fact, might be out of that pretty soon because of that unusual option activity that got us in. But the, the, the movement has been extraordinary. So that's something to keep an eye on. We continue to see some of that in these China names. As a matter of fact, yesterday, take a look at what happened with Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. You some of the fintech plays. We talk about PayPal all the time. PayPal, again, up another 2.5%. It's just extraordinary to watch what areas of the marketplace really do have the most fuel. But again, far more spread out as I've gone through multiple names and different sectors than what we hear oftentimes. And I think it's really, really important to understand that. You, the continued swell in option volumes is another uh, factor that we've been watching time and time again. Matter of fact, yesterday, traded about 28 million contracts again yesterday. Just a monstrous day. So June, we averaged about 28.3 million per day. So far, when you look back to May, averaged about 20.8 million contracts a day. That's a pretty big jump, right? I would, from call it 21 million to a little over 28 million, 
per day from May into June and July is definitely living up to some pretty high volumes as well. Really, really strong. So we started off today with a relatively flat market with the Dow. And then very, very rapidly, we started seeing the, the Dow pull back. It was down about 90 points. It's now down about 180 points. It was down even a little bit further. Some of that having to do with uh, investigation of President Trump and, and, and talking about, uh, you know, is he going to have to supply tax records, all that kind of thing. That seemed to be something that pressured the markets because it was right around that exact same time where we saw that next leg go a little bit lower. Now, the NASDAQ still kind of hanging in there. As a matter of fact, I look at the NASDAQ, it's still in positive territory. It's still up about 35 points. It was up about double that. It was up about 70 points earlier. That pulled back as well. You have Cisco, you have Tesla, you have Microsoft, you have Costco, all those various names. So Costco, I mentioned that name because it, we, we, it's not all tech. And, and sometimes that gets caught up as well. As a matter of fact, the other day, one of the leadership names was a retail name, not just Walmart, which everybody was talking about, but coal stores as well. So there's all kinds of shifting going on in the marketplace. And it, it needs to be told that there is more going on than meets the eye. And it's not just the power five. So China leadership again today, Netties, Jet, JD, Baidu, those kind of names moving once again, Baba, all these names continue to have some sort of strength, it seems, from bell to bell and that movement. If you go back, take a look at some of the moves of where these stocks were even just a week ago or two weeks ago to where they are now. Pretty extraordinary. Now, there is some weakness. We see some weakness. I talked about the cruise ships earlier. Travel and leisure today. Back on the downswing, push it to the downside. So that's back in the red. You look at those airline stocks, they've got pressure once again. So there's been some ups and downs and United, obviously, and, and many of the various names in the in the airline space. What's What's been going on has been some of the concerns of what's next, what happens when we approach October and how many jobs are going to be lost once again because of the fact that we aren't quite seeing the return to travel that we initially had expected, or at least that the airlines had expected. It's a little bit disappointing right now. So today, semiconductors once again, just absolutely on fire. AMD to the upside, NVIDIA to the upside, the index hitting new highs once again on the SMH. So we are seeing something outside of just the specific names, and we're talking about some of these semi semiconductor names as well that just continue to move through the, the markets and stair-step a little bit higher, some pullbacks here and there, but generally that direction has definitely been higher. Unusual option activity for today. I got a name for you that we we talk about once in a while, and it, it one of the reasons why I sometimes shy away from it is the movement is so rapid, so incredible, and that was an example today of what, what I'm seeing in Roku. So Roku, Roku, take a look at where the stock started the day. I'm one hour, less than one hour into the trading session. Right about one hour, but just a little bit less. Take a look at where Roku started the day. Take a look at to where we saw this unusual option activity starting to hit. Stock was trading about 143. Near the, if, if you look at the 52 week highs, it's still a little bit off of that, but it's not too terribly far. 176, it's trading around 143 right now. Had buyer of 14,000. We talk about short term all the time. 14,000 of tomorrow's expiring. <laughs> Today's the 9th, then the 10th, July 10th expiring, 140 calls. They, they started buying them. This gives you a little example, folks, of how fast these option markets can move. When they started purchasing, the, the options were about a buck sixty-five. When they were finished, it was about five eighty. That's a big explosive move, and that's why I say oftentimes I kind of shy away from some of these. But it stood out because fourteen thousand of these contracts were bought, and the extreme short term of this, it really did stand out as unusual. Is it uh, sort of on the higher end of risk? I would say absolutely. You look at those premiums; they're pretty high, they're pretty strong when you when you consider how fast that moved from the initial buyers of one sixty-five to where they finished up at 580. That's why you've got to get educated. That's why you've got to understand the options world so that you can have more chances for success. Nobody's going to guarantee anything, but the more you know, the more you're going to have a better opportunity for some successes along the way. And that's what we aim to do each and every day. Market Rebellion, we've got the greatest educators in the world. You've got to check these guys out. They do an absolutely amazing job. I'm so proud of our guys. But the experience. The experience is definitely going to be a better experience if you understand why and how the options markets move and all the mechanics that go into it, all the Greeks as we call them all the time, because there's alpha, there's delta, there's gamma, there's theta, there's all these various Greeks. 
that are part of the pricing model as well. And if you can have an understanding of that, you have a much better opportunity for success. I'm Pete Najarian. Have a great day. And I'll see you on the halftime report today. I'll be on at noon. Melissa Lee is going to be hosting. Got a great group of people that are going to be on there. Once again, Sarat Sati, one of my all-time favorite guys, Carrie. Steve Weiss is going to be there as well. We got a great group of people. And we're going to be answering questions, all the rest of that. I will have unusual option activity as well today on the halftime report. Folks, have a great day of trading.